In our top stories today, Clint Eastwood really wants everyone to know he doesn't use CBD. Federal scientists unveil a new testing program, and it's an especially happy Friday for the execs at Curaleaf. If you're curious what strain pairs best with poppin' bottles of champagne, they probably know. It's Friday, July 24th, and this is your Tricomes Morning Buzz. Broadcasting live from the Tricomes.com studios in Southern California, it's time for your Morning Buzz. We bring you late-breaking news that keeps you up to date with what's happening in the cannabis industry. First up, Clint Eastwood sues three CBD companies after they allegedly falsely claimed he endorsed their products. Reported by Hemp Industry Daily, actor Clint Eastwood is suing three CBD companies alleging they created articles and emails that falsely claimed he was endorsing their products and that he had his own CBD line. The lawsuit filed Wednesday in Los Angeles federal court says Mr. Eastwood does not have and never has had any association with the manufacture, promotion, and or sale of any CBD products. Named in the lawsuit are Sarah Labs Inc. and Green Dios, both doing business in Los Angeles, and For Our Vets LLC from Maricopa County, Arizona. The lawsuit goes on to say, By this action, Mr. Eastwood seeks to hold accountable to persons and entities that wrongfully crafted the scheme, spread false and malicious statements of facts about him, and illegally profited off his name and likeliness. According to the filing, Eastwood is seeking an award of actual and compensatory damages in the millions of dollars, among other things, as well as attorney fees, and for a judge to order the companies to stop using his name and likeliness to advertise their products. Eastwood is not the first celebrity to claim his image is being fraudulently used to promote CBD products. Previously, Tom Hanks took to social media to denounce similar advertisements. Next, a program to improve cannabis lab testing accuracy is unveiled by federal scientists. A federal science agency launched a program on Tuesday aimed at helping laboratories accurately measure key chemical compounds in hemp and cannabis products, including oils, edibles, tinctures, and balms. The National Institute of Standards and Technology's Cannabis Quality Assurance, or Canna QAP, program could increase accuracy in product labeling and help forensic laboratories distinguish products between federally legal hemp and THC-containing cannabis, which is, of course, still a Schedule I controlled substance. NIST, part of the U.S. Department of Commerce, is a physical science agency that helps set industry standards to encourage innovation and improve U.S. industry's ability to compete in the world economy. Through the Canna QAP program, NIST will send hemp oil samples to participating labs to measure the concentration of various compounds, including CBD and THC, and report back to NIST, according to a release. The goal is to help labs produce consistent measurement results. In the first round of exercises, the measurements obtained will be published to show the variability between labs, along with the correct measurements to allow labs to measure their performance compared to other labs. However, the published samples will be anonymized, so lab identities are not revealed. Researchers will also assess laboratory methods to analyze which perform better results than others so it can recommend the best methods. And lastly today... Curly finalized the deal to grow its cannabis footprint to 23 states. MJ Biz Daily reports multi state operator Curaleaf said Thursday it has completed its acquisition of privately held grassroots cannabis, expanding Curaleaf's presence to 135 dispensary locations and licenses in 23 states. The original value of the deal was $875 million, but the Massachusetts-based Cureleaf announced an amended agreement in June that reflected a sell-off of unspecified grassroots assets in Illinois, Maryland, and Ohio to comply with license caps in those locations. Analysts at the time put the value of the revised deal at about $700 million. Cureleaf said it has appointed Mitchell Kahn, co-founder and CEO of Chicago-based Grassroots, to its board of directors. Here are key business aspects of the deal, according to a news release. The acquisition expands Curaleaf's footprint from 18 to 23 states, and Curaleaf said it now will have 88 operational dispensaries, 30 processing facilities, and 22 growth sites with a total of 1.6 million square feet of cultivation capacity. Also, the transaction, the company said, accelerates its expansion into Illinois, the country's newest recreational market, 
and Pennsylvania, a growing medical cannabis market. Remaining Maryland operations previously affiliated with Grassroots might be transferred to Cureleaf after a statutory three-year ownership holding period expires. The transfer is subject to regulatory approval and compliance with these license caps. And that was today's buzz. Thanks for listening. For more cannabis news and insights from industry professionals and a place to discuss these stories and others, visit trichomes.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. You can also keep up with Trichomes on all social media platforms and the Trichomes YouTube channel. For trichomes.com, I'm David Horton. And I'm Allison Benyuda. Take care and have a great weekend.